I have a passion for building, designing, and things like that. Yeah. I don't have a, a passion for building for somebody else. Right. I do have a passion for helping as many people as I can through video and through content, whether it's educational, whether it's fun, whether it's showing off others. I have a passion for that. Well, I decided to do a vlog of Tiny Fest Southwest this year. It is rare to have a tiny house festival that is in the middle of the winter. So we are in December right now. Never done this venue before. Uh, tiny Fest, the company, has had them in Southern California, in Northern California, the Pacific Northwest, and other states as well. But I don't think they've ever done one in Arizona, which is where we are. We are inside the portion where the professional builders are as well as the vendors will be in here. So today is load-in day. I'm not gonna be able to show you everything that is here because there is a lot happening here. There are vans, there are tiny houses, and there are many, many vendors. There's also a nomad village. I'm also speaking on uh, tomorrow, which is Saturday. This event is only for two days, Saturday and Sunday. People always ask where you can find this event, where you can find any of these events. Honestly, guys, the internet, Google searches is the best thing to do. My good friends, no matter customs, they are here. Uh, I also have other friends here. Cruising Comfort is over there, which we'll show a little bit of. I'm using their air conditioning system for my tiny house. I've used it in my vans before. Really cool stuff. I just met this gentleman here. He's awesome. He owns a company. Now I'm blanking on the name of that company. It's Carefree Camper Vans, so they're cool. Let's go check out the Nomad so you guys can see what that village is like during the load-in process. Good morning, everybody. So I am now out at the Nomad Village. A little spinny spin spin so you guys can see what's going on as you can see nomad village is outside anybody that pretty much has a rig whether it's a diy this is predominantly diys but you can also bring a professional rig here like if it was professionally built and you're you're now the owner of it you can be part of the nomad village you you are a nomad that's what you are i woke up like absolute garbage this morning i was going to show you guys this last night it got dark really quickly because it's December. I don't have what everybody thinks that I might have. I took a test for that, so we're good there, but I am in some pain. We're gonna pound some body armors and some Gatorades, and I'm gonna flush my system, and we're gonna see how I pick it up. Vans, buses, step vans or bread trucks, all sorts of different sizes, 40 to 50 nomads, and they've got another same amount of people in the inside professionals, plus vendors, that is a Legit tiny house on wheels. That's right, it's a semi truck. But everybody's up and at it, cooking their breakfast. The doors are about to open, so I'm gonna go do a tour right now. Okay, don't do what I do. So last night I was feeling absolutely terrible. I drank a lot of Pedialyte, Gatorade, water. I had a little bit of food, but I left the festival early because I was not feeling well at all, obviously. I didn't record anything. I didn't even do any tours, which I was upset about, but that's okay. Staying at a hotel while I'm here, thankfully. And I went back to the hotel, turned up the heat to 90 degrees and put all my clothing on and I sweated it out. So I pretty much made my own sauna while drinking a lot of fluids and I just sweat out everything that was bad in me. And it worked. I feel a lot better today like coughing up some phlegm, which is really disgusting, so sorry, but I'm gonna do some tours, I'm gonna do some videos today, so I'm excited, let's go. I'm actually not even putting you in this section of it. I was gonna do something with Sydney. I was just gonna give her a plug. That's all I wanted to do. You never knew who you're gonna run into at the tiny house festivals, and I ran into Divine on the Road, Sydney. I, I totally knew I was going to be running into you here. I literally called him immediately as soon as I walked in the door. You did, actually. Yeah, I didn't know who else I was going to know, so I was like, uh, I'm going to call Jared. Well, other than the guy that I brought. Uh, what's really exciting about Sydney uh, is you have, you finally started your YouTube channel. To be honest, I thought you were going to say that I got engaged. <laughs> I was really well, ready to... That too. I was, I was that really too. ready to pull out my left hand and then you said Can YouTube channel. You, well, well, right, you brought that up. Let's see the ring. Can we see the ring? Oh, look at that! There's her fiance. This just happened, so this feels more exciting than the YouTube channel, but the YouTube channel exists. Okay. I'm really on the shorts game. I like vertical. Let's go subscribe to her channel, please, because she's awesome. And obviously her fiance is an awesome dude. Uh, and uh, yeah, go check them out. Divine on the Road, 
Congratulations to you. Thank you so much. And Henry, congratulations. Jared Tashi. Thank you. Be a minister. What's so up, Chris? So you want to be a minister? I need to do this right now. Yeah, let me get my certification. I'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you said weddings a minute ago, and I was like, yeah, my wonder if you appreciate it. Yeah. I'm, oh, my God. I was just in a panel, and somebody said, what's a YouTube channel you recommend? And somebody literally said, Jared. Oh, sweet. Devon and Sydney, Devon on the road. Henry, Keeping Finn. Yeah. Keeping Finn. Uh, which does, you do a whole bunch of amazing yeah. stuff for rescue animals. That's right. Uh, predominantly rescue dogs. Yes. Right? Yeah, Those we, are dogs. We, a dash of cats, cats in there. Yeah. A dash of cats? A dash of cats. <laughs> All right. No, like, do some no chickens, right? No, no, no horses. <laughs> no no horses. But, but we are pro chicken, so. You are pro yeah. chicken? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Congratulations, both of them. <laughs> Muscles on the move. <laughs> Muscles on the move. <laughs> Muscle on the move, Van Olympics. And Mr. April from uh, the, the Van Life Calendar. One half of the Adventure Allen. Shout out to my wife, Adventure Rick Tate. Allen. Oh, Adventure Allen. That's Love correct. You. That's absolutely. <laughs> uh, the wife's not here. She didn't travel with you. Yeah. She's busy snowboarding. Sky. I just watched yeah, her short. Yeah, she's too busy shredding. Shredding. The Chad. Uh, bearded Van Life. I've done a whole tour of this guy. Amazing stuff. Go check all these people out because they're amazing. I am about to sit down with Chad. He runs a Good YouTube show. channel. What's your YouTube channel name? Life on the Road. Life on the Road. Miles from Light Harvest Solar has a booth set up right next to where we are about to film this, but Life on the Road does interview-based content, thank you, about just what it's like to live on the road. What it's like to live on the road. Now, I don't do full-time anymore, so I don't know how this interview is gonna go. Uh, Light Harvest Solar. And I just crashed it. Yeah, no, we're not gonna start it yet. But, dude, we need to order my electrical system. Let's do it, this week, this. Yeah. For the third time. You're this busy. Week. No, I'm not too busy. Well, I am too busy for you, but I'll make time <laughs> this week. Yeah, we will get it done. All right, guys, I am beat. I'm here with Mark. You're sick. I do not feel well at you're all. You're disheveled. I'm disheveled. I think I did you're, like you're three, six tours. You're three, tour, you're three shades of green, one shade of red. I'm gonna go back to the hotel and just pass out. <laughs> I gotta get up early and I gotta fly to Salt Lake. And then from Salt Lake, I am going home to Boston, but I gotta go visit VanCraft. Uh, this is the end of the festival. I am very, very sorry. I said that I was gonna try and show as much as I could. I ran out of gas, everybody. This is like empty now. So I go <laughs> The reason why I'm kind of sitting here with Mark is we were finishing up a van tour and the battery died. I'm gonna walk outside. Did you wanna walk outside with me? Sure, I mean, they're having a party out there. I know, that's why I wanted to walk outside. Just so I could show the camera. I'm not partying, everybody. No, 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 no. Did you see the, uh, on Incredible Tiny Homes, did you see the, uh, the rainwater collection? I did. Yeah. Super I, cool. I want to put that in the, in the tiny. I recorded on the first day and I don't remember if I showed this or not. So I'm going to walk over here real quick. How do you feel about tiny home for 20 grand? It's pretty cool. What's the <laughs> trifecta thing? You can do it I don't cheap. know. You tell me. A cheap, it's cheap, fast, and good. And good. And so you can only you can do two. two. <laughs> Cheap, fast, and good. And yeah. you can only do two out of those three. If you if you do it cheap and fast, it ain't gonna be good. If you do it good and cheap, it's not gonna be fast? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Either way, and if you do it fast and good, it's not gonna be cheap. Yeah. I guess that's what it is. I don't know, I heard that one like a while ago and then somebody reiterated it today. Yeah. Do you, I agree with that like wholeheartedly. 100%. 100%. I try to do cheap, fast, and good, and that's why I got these big circles under my yeah, eyes. Yeah, I, I know you can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. I know that for a fact. Yeah. So this is their rainwater collection system. Now, the good news is I asked them if I could buy that system off of them, and they said yes. The only reason I wasn't going to put that in my tiny house was because I didn't want to engineer the damn thing. Seems like they've done it for me, yeah. so that's I'm going cool. to just buy it. From what I'm told, it's like 2,500 bucks. Yep. And I, for me, I don't want to engineer it. I don't want to do all the math and all that other filter for configuration. So the way I look at it is 2,500, well worth it, in my opinion. Yes. I could be wrong, I could be right, I don't know. I'll probably make it look a little bit better because I'll probably paint it the outside color of my tiny house. Little live wall. Yeah, I don't know if they're hiding any imperfections or not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> actually, the team at Incredible, they were actually really nice people. You could say they're incredible. But you see what I did there? <laughs> I'm not feeling good. I'm taking care of you, but I'm also staying like an you, arm. You were just had your arm around me. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, if we walk out, I'm afraid that we're not gonna get back in. Uh, Mark's gonna guard the door while I just show the party because there's no way I'm going over there because I'm gonna get accosted with a bunch of different things. Come back in a half hour. Half hour? You're gonna see me, I'm gonna be right here. And it's also dark, so you guys aren't gonna really see much. Festival vibes. The festival vibes, look at that. Oh, they're all just sitting in a, yeah. They're just sitting in a, in a roundabout over there and it's way too dark. I'm going back in. I'm gonna finish off the video with Marky Mark. And we're gonna have a grand old time, everybody. Mark, there's your nomadic custom setup way over there in yonder. Where? It looks like a <laughs> miniature. Look at the size of this warehouse. People need to come to these festivals more if you are intrigued in the tiny house, van life, schooly life world. Not only do you get to visit and meet with and talk with pro builders, but you also get to meet a bunch of nomadic people that are in the nomad village that's sponsored by nomadic customs ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you get to meet and you get to chat with people that have done a lot of diy vans as well or diy schoolies the next tiny fest is going to be in march and that is going to be in san diego don't know if i said this already but i never get sick the last time i was sick was when i had something that i can't say that was over two years ago Mm -hmm. It's two and a half years ago. I've been trying to get him out of the van building world for a while now. <laughs> yeah. I've been trying to get him into other things, but he doesn't want to listen to me. Addicting. <laughs> it's addicting. I'll be honest with you guys. For all you van builders out there, want want to be van builders or startup van builders, I talked to the owner of Boho Vans, which is a massive company, and he told me straight up in a video that he did not pay himself for a little over two years. Yep. And you didn't pay yourself for, I think, three. Paid myself three and a half years in, gave myself uh, not a very large amount of money. For all of you, you know, want to be like, you guys are making so much money from this, like, oh my God, true yeah. van builders and business owners know that how much it takes because your time is worth obviously money and your payment is next to nothing. Yeah. I mean, if I were to be realistic, I'm paying for insurance, I'm paying for payroll, I'm paying for a facility, yeah. I'm paying for tooling up, I'm paying for supply, and then I'm paying for all of the supply that goes to each individual van, yeah. and then I'm paying for all the little specialty things going on to the van. And, and warranties. And warranties. and Because uh, when a warranty comes in, you pay free labor. Yep. Yep. Exactly. You really sit and pencil it out. You just realize that you're doing it for the love I mean, of building vans. <laughs> all you people that are like, oh, van builders are killing it. If you're, if they are a true van builder, they are not. And, or and, they're scam artists. Or, they, or they're they're taking advantage yeah. of, of the popularity. I said popularity. it differently. Yeah, they're taking advantage of the popularity Which, of sadly, is a lot more than what people think. Yeah. And I've tried to call some out, and I will continue to call some out on this channel because it needs to be done and i'm sorry it's got i've never wanted to do this and it's gotten to this point sad any industry that ends up take or you can apply it to anything a cool a neighborhood the artists move in they make it really cool they they kind of start making it into something that that everyone wants to be a part of because it looks so um, friendly and everything and next thing you know then you have all of the places that start popping up yep. and all the chain stores start popping up and then this really cool thing that was started out ends up kind of turning into something that 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 isn't as fun i i think this kind of happens in so many different genres of yeah. life yeah and um and van building wasn't uh, uh you know immune to that I, I no. think I think that people have come in and they've realized, oh, this is a trending thing to do. Yep. See it as a way to kind of be able to do the dream that we all want to do. We yep. all want to kind of travel and have freedom and doing all these things. And, and van life very much provides that. But what starts happening is you have people that start capitalizing on the fact that it is a trending thing. Yep. And then once it starts trending like that, then you get the people in who like don't know what they're doing yep. or they put their name up on a shingle. There's no certification or anything like that to become a van builder. And so then it all becomes off, change. off of experience, right? And that change is coming. That change is coming in insurance, yep. that change is coming in just the regulation. It, it always takes government, municipalities, 
insurance companies and banks and they have a long time to catch up and they haven't figured it out with tiny houses either yeah. you know they they started to with noah and PacWest. the certifications let me clarify because it's also not poo-pooing the diy people that are out there trying to start a business yeah i'm obviously that's, an advocate of DIY. that's a great thing to do but be honest with yourself be honest with your clients um try to be fair you know build a van and sell it for hundreds of thousands of dollars because that's what the market is allowing yeah um you gotta you know as a as a client or as a someone who is interested in this you need to start vetting the information and finding out you know do people have insurance do they have warranties yeah warranties can, insurance are the big ones can they cover can they cover problems will they hold up their warranty yep. um do they have a contract because once they go out of business your warranty is voided yeah i heard a horror story about that at this show yeah. they threw one hundred and thirty five thousand dollars. One hundred and thirty five. $135,000 at this build, and they can't even contact the person who built their van. They don't care about the person that they messed up on because they've got 50 people in line willing to give them money. Which is screwing out the people. That's yeah. sad, that it is, is sad. And that's the take advantage thing. I fully support people who wanna go out and start businesses, and but well, I was just be say. honorable, be, be honest, have integrity. You know, even if it's at your expense. I was outside earlier and I was talking to Chad that I've toured on my channel and he has a build by Ross Monster. You know Ross Monster, I know Ross Monster. They are a reputable builder. But there was a gentleman that walked into that van and he walked out. I was just standing there, but I was answering questions because I know pretty much everything there is to know about van life. And I finally was just like, hey, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? Are you building a van? Or Because he was starting to ask me about tiny houses because I told him I was building a tiny house. And he said, well, I'm actually trying to start a business and I want to start building tiny houses. He's like, what's your take on that? And I was like, yeah, don't do it. And I told him flat out, I was like, don't do it. Now, I also tell people not to start YouTube channels. I also tell people not to, not to pursue something because I want to see your reaction from that. I tell them that because I want them to be like, well, that's my passion. Yeah. I want to do that. One of the best examples is I have a passion for building, designing, and things like that. Yeah. I don't have a, a passion for building for somebody else. Right. I do have a passion for helping as many people as I can through video and through content, whether it's educational, whether it's fun, whether it's showing off others. I have a passion for that. You have a passion for building art pieces on wheels that are tiny houses. I have a passion for uh, being able to put my craft to work through the lens of the clients that we have. So the, the clients come to us and they're like, we want this super crazy thing and we're like, we're gonna figure that out. It's fun to be able to listen to our client and have them be like, hey, we have this crazy idea, can you do that? And we're like, yes, and just, that's what I have the passion for. Just don't come to Mark and ask him for a hot tub. On the a, roof. On the roof. I might figure that out though. And I said this earlier in an interview that I did that I feel like the last 18 months from 2020 when everything hit the fan uh, to 18 months later it was a lot of people taking advantage whereas we are just now getting back into the passion of why people are doing this yeah. whether it's freedom whether it's passion for design and building the community is coming back together yeah and it's taken about two years to really kind of reset itself well we all needed to get reset we get did reset that. that whole situation did is it really um put a lot of people in the room of thinking for themselves. Yeah. And it's nice to start feeling the community kind of coming back out again. Yeah, the community is definitely coming back and we're coming back strong. And I, I love to see the feedback that I'm getting at these kind of shows. Yeah. Absolutely. Because honestly, we went through a pro, because it was shut down for about a year. Yeah. But I would say about another year, it was pretty depressing at these shows. Yeah. I, I hate to say it. Like, yeah. it was pretty bad. Like, the people that were coming were coming for the wrong reasons. And I really feel that the right reasons are coming back out again. Yeah, we're, st yeah. It's, I mean, it's coming back. Not to seem cheesy, but that love of, of everything is kind of starting to come back into it. This video was not about you, but. No, it wasn't about but you. But we had a, mar a mark in it for a lot. <laughs> I don't script any of this. This is all improv. And uh, it was just one of those talks that I had that was like, honestly, Mark and I have had these talks a lot, not camera rolling. 
So it was nice to actually have the camera on for this. Well, for me, it's great because when you have good friends, you can talk any, you can talk over difficult topics and yeah. talk over things. And it always surprises me when you call me out of the blue or I call you out of the blue. And then I look at the time when I hung up and it's like two and a half hours. And I'm like, yeah, Man, we had a, we had a Jared, recent call earlier. Yeah. Jared's like my girlfriend. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we, are relationship. we are a long distance relationship. <laughs> uh, we talked for an hour and 45 minutes yeah. the other day. It was like two weeks before the show. And I was like, dude, I got work I got to do. Yeah. And you were like, I got to go build vans. Yeah. And it was like, all right. Cool. And we were on a three hour time difference. Yeah. 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 So it was like super late for yeah, me. Yeah, you were up to like two. I had to finish editing video, so I was up yeah. until two that night, yeah. So it's always great to get into these kind of conversations because you know, you you start to kind of realize how important it is to you. Yeah. And when you start to realize that, then you know that you can better serve everyone yeah. that's out there. So All right, guys. I, I gotta say also, just thank you. You oh, you thanks, have buddy. a good reach and and it's Walking around this show to, um, this weekend was a good reminder of how much good content you put out there for people. Thank because you. everyone was like, I, oh, you need to look at Jared Tachi because he's really honest. He tells people what to do. He's very frank about what he says. So This festival was great, even though I was kind of out of it for a day. I was telling Alaska, which is the MC for the event. I was like, I don't even remember talking. I don't remember. I don't remember what was said. I have no idea. So if you were at that talk, I apologize that I was not 100%. Um, come out to the next one. I will be 100%, and I will give a much better talk about whatever they tell me to talk about. Until next time. Let's get out of here. Yeah, get let's finish this video. Up.